Um, can you advise how you to intend to structure the 49% shareholding that's going to be available to New Zealanders so it stays in the hands of New Zealanders for now and into the future? I've seen too many schemes like this where eventually they are sold to foreigners. And um, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but how do we ensure that the benefit of those shares stays with New Zealanders into the future? Okay. Can I just give you a fact here? Foreign ownership of our share market has been dropping consistently for the last six or seven years. So New Zealand owns more and more of the share market. Uh, and I can't see any reason why that trend would change. Uh, <clears throat> we're not getting ahead of ourselves around detailed policy over the mixed ownership model. You know, if we are re-elected, we will then proceed with the policy. Uh, but in the meantime, we are looking at a number of the schemes that have been used by different governments. The driving principle is Kiwis at the front of the queue. Uh, we need to be able to achieve that while still getting good value for the taxpayer. I mean, all that happens is we give them a share certificate and they give us the cash. We ended up with the same amount of assets. It's just in cash instead of, instead of as, a, as half a power company. Uh, and a number of those schemes focus on things like loyalty. So can you reward people for holding the share for longer? Uh, and other schemes focus on having more widespread ownership. So allowing people, for instance, to pay in instalments if they can't afford to pay it all up front. Uh, I have no doubt we will have, if we get to do this, there will be very strong interest from the New Zealanders in buying it. I mean, in the end, uh, you could make a whole lot of rules, but uh, the record is in Contact Energy, which was the last big one done back in the late 90s, a very significant proportion of the people who bought shares then still own them. And it is the most, I think, the most widely held company uh, on the share market. Uh, <coughs> the, you know, we, we, in the end, if you run, want to run a capitalist economy and people have shares, uh, then I believe New Zealanders will want to own those companies. Uh, and uh, that's what will make the thing work. So we'll look at whether their loyalty should be rewarded. Uh, but we're not going to, I don't think, go as far as banning them from being able to further, you know, being able to sell, because the market has to be able to work. Um, I wasn't entirely convinced with your um, explanation as to how we're going to retain the ownership of the, uh, you sell down on the shares. One thing that appears to be happening, and I come up with a lot of it, uh, with a lot of friends and colleagues who are very concerned that the incentives that you're going to provide to prevent offshore selling. Are you going to guarantee that they go to our super fund or are you going to give a tax incentive perhaps to um, uh, Kiwi owners who to retain their shares as opposed to uh, selling them on the open market? Because basically it would be against our principles of free enterprise if we were to put restrictions. So it's going to be very difficult to convince the public and that's the problem I have, think. Yeah, well, look, we, we we understand, I think, the understand the concern, but you know, just just bear in mind, foreign ownership, some foreign ownership of our fair share market is something we have lived with uh, for the whole time we've had a share market, uh, and it's been so up at times in the past. There's been foreign ownership of up to sort of forty percent of the New Zealand share market, and as I said before. The last six or seven years, it's been consistently dropping. And some people would look at that and say that's not such a good thing because it means that our share market is less attractive, so we're going to have less capital coming into the companies that we need to grow this economy. So, the, the, so there's a, the, I think some of the, the political opposition are focusing on that issue because they think it's one that will get public resonance. Uh, but, you know, we, we'll go through a process which uh, will see uh, Kiwis at the front of the queue, probably a significant majority of the shares go to Kiwis, and who knows, it's not clear whether, you know, because we haven't looked in detail at the rules yet. Um, Kiwis will still have the opportunity to 
on sell shares. Otherwise, it's not a market. You can't sort of say, well, you can have the share, but you're not allowed to sell it to anybody. That is, you know, um, doesn't even happen in places like China. So I think we should be, well, they're much more right wing than us. We're very little of the road. Um, <laughs> so I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't be driven too much by the fear that if, some, if a New Zealander sells their shares to an Australian, that that's going to be bad for our economy. In fact, you know, your banks are Australian, your largest insurance companies are Australian, uh, no one even notices. Uh, what we want is energy companies that are getting their prices down, uh, taking part in a market that's working and providing value for shareholders. So we can go a long way encouraging New Zealanders into this. We'll look at the incentive scheme. Uh, but I can't make the commitment that we will restrict further sale of those shares.